live outside of our Fox 6 studio here in Kearney Mesa. Let's go back inside now with Des. All right, Chrissy, thank you. In a Fox 6 special report this morning, we're taking a closer look at hyperbaric oxygen tanks. Up until recently, the tanks were only used in severe medical cases, but now the procedure is being used for minor health problems, too. Fox 6's Sherry Palmieri explains. At just five hours old, Jennifer Cullen almost choked to death. She survived but suffered a brain injury that affected her behavior, her balance, and her ability to learn. Jennifer, show me your nose. It was very heartbreaking, very heartbreaking, but we, we never gave up hope. Jennifer's young life became consumed with tutoring, speech therapy, and physical therapy. What's missing? Jennifer has never been a normal child, you know, your typical child. Her condition worsened when she began to have seizures, sometimes as many as 60 in one day. It was, like, tough. It seemed like the more intense therapy, you know, we would, we would make improvement. But then sometimes we'd also, with the seizures and stuff, you might see a little backsliding. Then Jennifer's family heard about hyperbarics. Initially, hyperbaric oxygen chambers were used to help divers who made mistakes while underwater. But now these chambers are used to help treat medical conditions. Essentially, hyperbarics is a way to pump more oxygen into the body to speed up the healing process. How are you feeling? Good. The repair cells and also the get better cells are all oxygen energized. They need 24 times more oxygen to make them work quickly and effectively. And that's just every disease there is. Bob Sands opened one of the first non-physician hyperbaric clinics in San Diego back in 1990. He's treated more than 30,000 patients and says he's had a 90% success rate in using the chambers for more than 40 off-label treatments. Alrighty. It is mainstream medicine for a little short list of 14 life and limb salvage acute care problems. We want to save the patient's life. Why isn't it being backed by insurance companies as a matter of dollars? At $200 per 90-minute session, Sands charges a tenth of what hospitals charge. But some doctors argue hyperbaric chambers are not a cure-all. We don't have a lot of comparative data that says, okay, if we don't do anything versus putting this person in a hyperbaric chamber, who's going to do better and why? Because the differences between people are such that you don't know whether it's the person that's doing better on their own or whether it's the chamber making them better. With their neurologist's blessings, Jennifer's family decided to give hyperbarics a try. Her mother says within four months, they saw dramatic results. You know, the fact that it stopped her seizures, the fact that her balance issues, it was like for her all of a sudden the light bulb turned on. Her ability to learn things improved, her language improved. Jennifer says her entire life improved. I get to go to school, make friends, go ice skating. Nowadays she not only skates but competes. A far cry from the little girl whose balance issues once prevented her from even making it up the stairs. In Golden Hills, Sherry Palmieri, Fox 6 News. And this morning, Julie Payne joins us. She, too, has been treated with hyperbaric oxygen, uh, and she is very happy to be here, I know. <laughs> How are you? I'm doing well, thank you. Tell everybody um, a little bit about your story. I know you had gone on a trip, and when you returned, you noticed something wasn't right. Yes, I developed flu-like symptoms, um, just your normal flu-like symptoms, and then it eventually evolved into pelvic and uh, lumbar spine pain. Uh, then just every day there would be some other different type of, you know, problem that I would experience. I went to the emergency room, I was hospitalized for six days and released without a diagnosis. Um, some of my symptoms were tremors, uh, nervous tics in the face, um, not being able to walk, I collapsed in my home. Uh, so I had five different specialists um, overseeing my case. And you were diagnosed, or misdiagnosed, I should say, several different times, yes. right? With all kinds of different possibilities. Nothing was really right. That's correct. So how did you finally find someone that 
pinpointed what your problem was and we'll tell everybody what that is in just a second. Sure. Um, basically I just did a lot of research on the internet um, trying to find you know different symptom relations to what I was going through and uh, after doing extensive research I found some answers and then just people saying oh I know somebody that has uh -huh. Same. took a lot of research on your part and yes. what did this doctor finally say was the problem Lyme disease and Lyme disease you I know you get from ticks from deer yes. right right okay deer tick. Uh -huh. so you had gone on this trip and that's what happened All, how long from the time that you started having symptoms to the time that you discovered what the problem was how many days or weeks months uh, actually it was basically two years wow yes. two, years. two years of searching so you finally figured this out and what was the treatment like for you what before you discovered this hyperbaric oxygen I did antibiotic therapy um, including intravenous IV pick line in my arm that went, uh, pumped recephin antibiotics directly through my body wow. it had to take a toll on your body yes, and on your mind I'm sure so finally how did you decide or who who talked to you about hyperbaric oxygen uh, again, it was research, and um, oh. a friend of mine said, I know someone that has done hyperbarics for Lyme disease, and she's doing extremely well. Would you like to speak with her? So she gave me her number, and I contacted her. It was a very positive conversation, and so then I did a little more extensive research and decided to try it myself. And how long before, from the first time you tried it to you know, when you started to see results? How long? Uh, well, uh, the third day I started kind of developing what they call a Herxheimer which is you know that the therapy's working and then on the eleventh day my brain fog lifted which I had lived with for about four years and it was incredible I knew that I was getting well I mean colors looked more vibrant um, just life I was singing and dancing and doing things I hadn't <laughs> done in so long so oh wow so what is is this the type of thing that when you discover that this is the the answer for your problem is this something you have to live with now for the rest of your life always getting the hyperbaric therapy or how does it work well actually there is not any um, information scientific information out there to base uh, evidence that you can rid yourself of Lyme disease completely but uh, through more research, I believe we will know that answer. There are some sig significant tests that you can have. Um, there's a Bowen test that you can have done to measure uh, you know how the disease is in your body. And I know and during uh, Sherry's piece there, she mentioned that oxygen sort of speeds up the healing process. And do you have, did anyone explain to you how it works and why that is? Yes, basically right now we're breathing about 20% oxygen and when you're under pressure you're breathing in 100% oxygen and it basically goes in and repairs red blood cells that carry oxygen to all the tissues and organs um, and also uh, it allows the oxygen get past the blood-brain barrier which antibiotics do not. Oh wow, so yeah. you have actually learned a lot from doing your own research yeah. and that's how you were able to find somebody to help you. I, I find that to be just wonderful that you took the initiative to do that and we appreciate you coming in this morning. Well, thank you very Julie much. Julie Payne, thank you very thank much. Thank you very much. All right, if you'd like more information or if you'd like to see Sherry's story, go to fox6.com. Right now, let's get over to...